partner <laughs> in so many things, including uh, health care, and has been doing such a great job uh, in the time that she's been in Congress and really looking out for her constituents and, and playing a major role uh, in, in, on the House floor, too. So thank you. I mean, your district. Thank you, Frank. Nice, yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So good morning, everybody. Um, I want to thank Citizen Action, and I think NJPP is here. And um, I just want to tell Adi that you're an amazing human being who's using your time on Earth to help others so that they might not have to experience what you are going through right now. And that's just what we should be looking to do. Um, there's nobody better uh, and more knowledgeable about what's happening, what's happened to healthcare, what was proposed for healthcare, and what is proposed when we uh, become the majority in November. And I believe because of so many things that are happening across this nation and so many mean-spirited policies being advanced, there is a very likely chance that we will have a majority. So Frank has very much told you um, sort of the history and where we are now. And I, so I just want to just talk a little bit about what did the expansion of Medicaid mean, and what does Medicare mean? And according to some of the research, the life expectancy was five years higher than before Medicare was signed into law. And research into life-changing and life-saving treatments has blossomed because of Medicare and Medicaid. Hospitals do better, people's mental health improves, and in one study, catastrophic out-of-pocket spending defined as cost above 30% of income was nearly eliminated among the adults who gained, who gained Medicaid coverage. So we know that it works. We know that it makes life better. We know that it, it uh, makes life longer, and it, and it gives people the opportunity to be healthier. And helping Americans is what we should be doing in expanding our programs, not contracting them. But instead of celebrating this 50 year, 53rd year anniversary, uh, we are trying to hold on. We are trying to push back. We are trying to galvanize people across this country who will stand up and, and, and speak out and um, push back on Republican policies. And there is a sense of desperation right now in Congress. So they're trying their darndest to do things in a very quick way. But I have found in my short time there that this really is a government of by and for the people. And when the people stand up, as they did right after this president was elected. It's hard sometimes to use his name with that word president. Um, when he was elected and these hundreds of thousands of people stood up and demanded that they retreat from trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act, it happened. But instead of it actually catching on and being the sort of movement of the day, they've been trying to kill it with little cuts every time we come to vote on something. This is real. This is about our healthiness. This is about the fact that health care, it is not a privilege. It is not an option. It is not a luxury. It is a right. And as the country that is the richest country in the world, although it might not be now, um, we should not have anyone in need of health care who doesn't have access to preventive health care, to health care for chronic illnesses, for health care for pre-existing conditions, and for health care that will extend their lives. It is through our rigorous application of resources in our research um, and our clinicals and things of that nature that have found uh, cures and treatment for diseases that we never thought would be treatable or curable. So Republicans in control of this Congress and in this uh, executive branch are taking us in the wrong direction. And we know that the people of this country are paying attention because we're getting the feedback. And all that I can say that this government of by and for the people, the people need to stay vigilant. They need to stay um, close to all of their um, members of Congress and to this administration. And they need to understand that the power rests with them particularly in November. And if they vote their self-interest, not only are we going to flip this House, we're going to flip the Senate. And that'll be a better day for the American people and for working families. Because it has been shown that A, Democrats care, and B, we have a plan. And so without further ado, I don't know if I get this pleasure again, but 
just like Frank is the champion in the House of Representatives, Bob Menendez has been the champion in the Senate on so many issues, including the Affordable Care Act. And it's my pleasure whenever I get the opportunity to bring him before people that I know that are listening. Senator Bob Menendez.